In the previous video of this series, we created the back panel of the Mark 8 case that will house a fan and I.O. ports. In this video, we'll be constructing the remaining pieces of the case and assembling them. The case I'm planning to build will be similar to one I saw online, but it will be made out of wood instead of metal. To begin, we can sketch the case on some draft paper. I haven't done these types of drawings in many years, so it may not be precisely accurate, but I think it will give us a good idea of what we're going to build. On top of the case, we will mount the backplane of the Mark 8 computer, which will hold all the accompanying boards. An acrylic rectangular case will be placed over the computer. Inside the enclosure, beneath the computer, we will mount the power supply, power conversion board, switchboard, and any required cabling. We will create separate drawings for the rear panel, switch panel, and top panel. These drawings will be used to construct each panel individually. As you may recall, we already built the rear panel, so we're going a bit back in time to show how we started with designing and drawing the rear panel. Now that the drawings are finished, we can begin construction. For the sides of the enclosure, we will use 3 quarter inch maple boards. Since the boards are not tall enough, we will glue two of them together to create a taller board. Ensure the grains of the boards are glued in opposite directions to prevent warping. For best results, use a jointer to even out the edges of the boards before gluing. After setting the clamps, wipe off any excess glue and let it sit for 24 hours before continuing. We can then remove the clamps. Ideally, we would run this board through a planer to ensure evenness, but as you may have noticed, I'm not working in a traditional wood shop and don't have access to a planer we'll have to manage without it. Back at the workbench, we can mark the dimensions of the side panels by referencing the drawing and then cutting them to size. Since I also don't have a table saw at the moment, I need to improvise and use other tools, in this case a miter saw. Remember to exercise caution when working with power tools and to use the appropriate protective equipment. With the side panels cut to size, we can start marking the locations of the grooves where the perpendicular panels will intersect. These are spaced out at quarter inch uh, all around except for the rear panel which will be mounted flush with the back. All the perpendicular panels are quarter inch thick except for the switch panel. I initially made the rear panel and front panel uh, 1 8 inch thick, but I later modified them to be quarter inch thick as well for a more solid enclosure. Back at the quote wood workshop, we can use a router to carve out the uh, grooves. Ensure they are a quarter inch deep and use a guide to make straight cuts. After completing the routing job, set the side panels aside for the time being. The next step is to construct the top panel on which the Mark 8 mini computer will sit. As noted on the drawing, the dimensions of the top panel are 10.5 inches wide by 9 inches long. This includes the quarter inch sides that will slide into the side panels. Also, know that there are cable ports on the back of the top panel. They are 2 and a quarter inch wide by 3 quarter inch long and should be large enough to accommodate DB25 connectors for later use. They're both aligned with the sides and the rear of the backplane. At the top of the front panel, there is space for a future air vent if required. As with side panels, glue two pieces of quarter inch boards together and let them sit for 24 hours to cure. After that, we can mark the dimensions of the top panel and cut it to size. 
Later in the video we will cut out the holes for the cable ports because I forgot to do it at this stage. It's much easier to do it now rather than later. Next we can cut out the front panel based on the dimensions annotated on the drawing, which are 10.5 inches wide by 1 and 7 8 inches tall. This includes the quarter inch sides that will slide into the grooves. Lastly, we can cut out a piece of plywood to close up the enclosure from the bottom. The dimensions are 10.5 inches wide by 12.5 inches long. This board is a quarter inch thick and will slide into the grooves cut out in the previous step. We will not be gluing this board, so we can access the internal components of the enclosure. Now that all the pieces have been constructed, it's time to dry fit them together. Sometimes uh, some sanding is required for the boards to fit in the grooves, as not all boards are the same thickness. Place all panels into one side of the side panels, except for the bottom panel, and then insert the panels into the sec second side panel. Notice how the switch panel fits with the other panels. It leaves a gap between the top and front panels. To achieve a better fit, we can sand the top and bottom of the switch panel at an angle so that it aligns perfectly with the adjoining panels. This process may require some trial and error. After everything has been dry fitted, we can finally glue all the pieces together. Apply glue to all sides of the grooves to ensure a strong bond. Insert each panel into its designated position and use clamps to hold the enclosure in place while it cures. Do not glue the rear panel, but insert it into its position to keep the enclosure from bending when using the clamps. Do the same with the bottom panel. Wipe off any excess glue and let it sit on a flat surface for 24 hours, ensuring that the case is flat on the surface and not twisted. After 24 hours, remove the clamps, the rear panel and bottom panel. Then apply a bit of glue between the switch panel and both the top and front panels. Apply pressure to keep the boards bonded while it cures. I like to cover any holes and imperfections with carpenter's wood putty, though this is not required. If you choose this route, apply putty where the switch panel meets both the top and front panels, and let it sit to dry. Once dry, sand the entire enclosure with a 100 grit sandpaper, followed by 220 grit sandpaper. If desired, use a higher grit for a smoother surface. Make sure to wear a mask as the dust can be harmful. Before continuing, mark the location of the backplane to identify where the cable ports will be. Drill pilot holes in each corner of the cable ports using a 1/8 inch bit and then use a 1/8 inch router bit to cut out the ports. Employ a guide for straight cuts. This step is much easier to accomplish before installing the top panel into the enclosure. Once done, sand the opening around the perimeter and then drill pilot holes for the backplane to be used for installing the backplane later on. Wipe down the enclosure with a damp cloth to remove dust. We're now ready to stain and seal the case. I will be using Espresso 273 oil based stain, but you can choose any color you prefer. This stain will produce a nice antique looking case. Don't forget to stain uh, the rear panel as well. Allow the stain to sit a bit and then wipe it down with a cloth or a paper towel. Also, make sure to wear gloves when handling stains and sealers and ventilate your work area. 
allow 24 hours for the stain to fully dry, and then install the rear panel using small panel nails. First drill pilot holes at a slight angle, where the nails will go, to prevent the wood from splitting. Hammer in four panel nails into the pilot holes. Apply a thin layer of sealer and let it sit for a few hours. Lightly sand it with a 220 grit sandpaper and apply another layer after that. Let it sit for 24 hours to fully dry. The last step is to install rubber feet on the bottom of the case. It's as simple as drilling holes for the screws and then screwing in the rubber feet. The case is now finished. Look at those beautiful antique colors. I added a plexiglass enclosure on top of the case for a complete appearance. The plexiglass enclosure is 9 inches wide, 9 inches long and 8 inches tall with an open bottom. We will probably mount it to the case in the next video but for now we'll just let it sit on top. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll be installing the Mark 8 mini computer into this case and hooking everything up. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.